Hi Brian, Stefan here. First, thank you for sending me the repro project to allow me to see the issue you're having with uh, Unity's input field. So what I'm going to be doing is showing you how we can replicate uh, basically this scene and setup using the Text Mesh Pro text input field and taking a look at whether or not the Text Mesh Pro input field has the same issue. So the first thing I did is I imported the soon to be released version of Text Mesh Pro in the project. As far as we're concerned for this example, uh, the text mesh pro input field that I'm using right now does have some additional functionality, but nothing that would affect what I'm about to show. So uh, we're going to add now a text mesh pro input field. The way you go about doing this is you would right click on the canvas because we want it to be a child of the canvas. I would go to UI and instead of choosing the Unity input field, I will choose the text mesh pro input field. Uh, I'll just move it over the other one and just resize it so that they're the same size. I'm just going to move it sideways and kind of eyeball uh, the distance right there. Let's move it a little bit closer. So the text mesh pro input field in terms of structure in the scene hierarchy is similar to the Unity one with the exception that there's a text area which is a viewport that contains a 2D rect mask. So this is how the text gets masked as it scrolls outside the viewport area. The Unity text input field is actually doing a bunch of string operations to truncate the text to only uh, trim it to show you what's visible, which has uh, issues in my opinion, and it's not really a, a, an elegant solution because it does add limitations when you're trying to add a scroll bar. It doesn't work with a scroll bar or a viewport uh, or a scroll view, whereas the text mesh input field, one of the new features in the next release, if I select it, um, is that you can now add a vertical scroll bar, for example. Uh, and because I'm using a uh, 2D rect mask and the text is always all there, we can obviously scroll it where here it's really tricky for Unity to try to do that. So having said that part, let's copy over the, the text into this one so we can have like a, a setup that's exactly like the other one. One of the things I did is I did change the point size from 12 to 14 just so it's easier to see what we're looking at. Um, so I will select their uh, placeholder text. I'm going to select the text mesh pro one, paste the text in there, remove italic, uh, make it not transparent and make sure I enable word wrapping right here. Um, next thing I'm going to do is actually let's look at theirs. Uh, this is Unity's input field. The text mesh pro one is very similar. The main differences uh, here, the text area is pretty tiny. Uh, right now it's using the multi-line new line. If I go to the text mesh pro one, we have a larger text area. We are going to set it up to multi-line new line. Now there's this font asset and font size right here. Uh, those were added for convenience. Uh, every time I'd have to do what I'm doing right now for you, an example is you always have to go and manually choose the placeholder, choose the font asset, um, well, I'll use the Unity one. So you have to go to the placeholder, choose the font, choose the point size, then go to the subtext object, choose the font, choose the point size, which gets to be annoying. So with the Text Mesh Pro 1, um, these are overrides. So basically, they will control both the child uh, placeholder and the main text object. Uh, you can still go and select those and manually override the settings, but just for convenience, it's kind of nice to just set it on one and it affects both. And this is true also for the point size. So we'll stick to 14. We'll make sure we're using Arial, so we're all good. So now we have a similar setup. Next thing we need to do is you have this script here which will populate the text input field. I modified your script uh, to make it work with both text input field. So in order to use the text mesh pro input field, you have to use the namespace using TM Pro. Uh, then I declared two public fields. One is the Unity input field, the other one's the text mesh pro input field. And I just added a conditional that if it's assigned, then it will do the thing with the text so we don't have an error. Um, so the next thing I need to do is just simply assign it to the text mesh pro input field. So I'll grab your script, assign it here, and then we just need to associate it right there. So now we're done. Let's just hit play and take a look at both. So this is the Unity one. So if I scroll all the way down, this is your issue because you have 10 lines and I can't get past line eight. 
This is the Text Mesh Pro 1. If I scroll down, then we see all 10 lines. Um, so basically it works and does what you expect it. If I select it this way, it's all good. Um, so one of the extra features and things, for example, is here when you select it, it selects all the text all the time. The Text Mesh Pro Input Field 1, you can say, look, on focus, you do not select all the text. So now it doesn't select all the text. And there's stuff when uh, does it reset when do you deactivate it? Uh, if you're typing text and you hit escape, does it clear the whole text? It does support rich text tag. It does allow uh, it does allow you to control whether or not a user can edit the rich text tag. And there's additional events that are accepts, uh, accessible there. Uh, I know I already covered. You can add like a vertical scroll bar to it. So this is basically it. Um, as you can see, the two components are very similar to each other. Uh, the way you've been using this one would be the same with the Text Mesh Pro 1. Uh, if you already had a bunch of scripts using it, you, you would literally just have to change from input field to add TMP underscore input field, and that would be the extent of the change you have to do. Uh, in the scene setup, it's a little bit more complex because you do have to replace their component and, and replace it by the Text Mesh Pro input field 1. Uh, but that's the extent of the change that you're going to have to deal with. Uh, in terms of the text rendering, obviously, uh, this is using a bitmap font, and the Text Mesh Pro 1 is using uh, the sign distance field text rendering, uh, which is uh, fancier. Um, but I'm going to skip that and let you watch all the Text Mesh Pro videos about this. So, if you have any questions, hopefully I answered your your basic question and, and showed you what you wanted to see. But if you have additional questions, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you for watching. And again, thank you for sending me your repro project to allow me to take a look at this. Thanks.